I'm tempted to just start off with a huge disclaimer, but instead I'm just going to say, hey, you don't have to be here. You don't have to hear any of what I have to say. You can leave and that is completely fine. This is a topic I'm very passionate about and as much as I will try to hold myself back, I will definitely be saying things that you will not like to hear if you are a blank. And that is kind of why I've been putting out this video for a while because I know no matter how big of a disclaimer I make, some people are just not going to understand. So instead, I will just say that this is not about Blackpink members personally but the issue that I have with their branding. This does not mean that just because I believe their feminist label is flawed that the members themselves are misogynistic. That is a huge leap and an inaccurate one. It is definitely commendable that Asian female artists have made themselves notable in an industry that tends to hold women of color back. However, it is their branding that I will be focusing on. I will just be criticizing some of the career moves Blackpink as a brand have made. So if you're one of those fans who can't handle real criticism, that's completely fine. I'm giving you all permission to leave. Bye, bitch. <laughs> now, hopefully my comments won't be an absolute shit show. Blackpink have always been labeled a girl power group, beginning in 2016 when the outdated idea of girl crush being more empowering than cute concepts had begun. I mean, girl crush itself is a flawed representation of female empowerment as it almost depicts hyperfemininity or elegance and cute concepts as not feminist or strong enough. When in reality, true feminism is letting women be women, and not asking them to either man up or be more soft-spoken, but just be themselves and be allowed to be themselves. Basically, girl crush implies that tough, badass girls are stronger than cutesy, girly girls. But in reality, we shouldn't need to act tough or less feminine to be heard. In this way, the concept that was made, Blackpink's bread and butter, already goes against this girl power image. Their fans seem to consider Blackpink to be the symbol of feminism because they don't cater to men, or at least Korean men, unlike some other groups, right? But I think a lot of you are harboring very misogynistic and outdated ideas of feminism, so I'm going to share why I think a lot of Blackpink's moves in the industry have actually established them as the opposite of this girl power brand their fans and label try to sell them as. Starting off with their lyrics. And who writes these songs, you may ask? Also men, literally making up what women are supposed to be thinking about and then forcing these lyrics upon women. Even then, I believe it is fine for women to choose to talk about men all they want and that doesn't necessarily negate their feminism. That can be quite an outdated thought. But when almost all of your discography is about how you are the ultimate women and other girls couldn't possibly compare, which is why a certain guy should choose you over them, that's the part that makes it problematic. But just so this video isn't an hour long, I will rapid fire through some weirdly misogynistic lyrics and explain why they go against this female empowerment label of theirs. Starting off with their track, Really. I understand that the intention is to say that hey boy, you should be with me, but demeaning other women around him saying they have nothing to offer, not very feminist if you ask me. And just to double check, yep, both the writers of the song are men. Moving on to their cover of So Hot by Wonder Girls, which as iconic as the song is, it definitely has questionable lyrics. In Blackpink's cover, they added their own rap part where they state, Now, I don't know about you, but it doesn't really seem very feminist to me to be erasing every other girl group in the game. You are in fact one of hundreds if not thousands of gangs who run the game in high heels, and that is okay. You can stand out without erasing other women and their contributions to the industry. Especially considering some of Blackpink's earlier hits were literally made for another gang with high heels. To anyone. And while I couldn't find clear credits for the rap part of this song, this song is again made by three men. There's this lyric from See You Later and then this one from Kick It. 
Now, this one will make more sense when we come to Blink's behavior as well, but pretty savage. This is an especially mean choice on the writer's part, knowing how many female idols their fans have attacked for allegedly copying Blackpink for wearing a headband or dyeing their hair orange or wearing black and white. This lyric basically encourages this kind of hateful behavior. And who would have thought, written by four men. And also in the same train, which Blinks now infamously use to hate on other female idols. There is also this one from Crazy Over You. Now this one is written by two men and one woman. Okay, slight improvement. Never mind. At first, I saw Type of Girl's lyrics and I was like, okay, great, this seems promising. But then... Up until then, it felt like they were telling the men that women can be in control and you can't boss them around, but apparently that's just black pink. So yeah, possibly the worst offender. Also this, from the same song. Now, let's ignore the quality of these lyrics and notice how many times they've put down other women in their songs, which are like 99% of the times written by men. And if you haven't noticed yet, I'm not using any of this to slander the members themselves because none of this has to do with their personal lives or their choices. It's about their brand. The only songs that come close to being somewhat girl power are the following. Love to hate me. It is a little ambiguous though because according to Blinks, this song is about haters, but the lyrics seem like they are pointing to an ex, so I'm not really sure. Besides that, the song is still very me-centric, which is a common theme among Blackpink tracks as they tend to talk more about themselves rather than focusing on women in general. I am a little apprehensive about it, but we will still be counting it. You Never Know is again me-centric, and while it may not be especially girl power, the lyrics might be some of my favorites from Blackpink just because they are very different to their usual tracks. It's sweet, it's raw, and while it may not necessarily be outwardly feminist, it is a good message, so I will be giving credit where credit is due. Lastly, Tally. Initially, the lyrics of Tally do seem, again, me-centric, as they seem to focus more on Blackpink's experience with the media and hate. However, I do think this song is empowering to women as they talk about how they can make decisions about their own lives and their own bodies and mess around just like men. And it's okay because no one is keeping Tally and they can do whatever they want, which is honestly a serve. And I honestly kind of wish their entire discography had more of a tally vibe because even with me being quite generous with the consideration, the statistics are really bad. Don't get me wrong, I'm not here to say that another group deserves this title more because honestly that's not really relevant and I honestly think that the work here is more important than any title. I would personally say that Blackpink would better fit labels like heartbreakers, bad girls, or not like other girls. And just to drive the point home about their lyrics, here is a chart of all of their songs and their themes. Because I'm kind of a chart nerd, and when put into statistics, it's kind of concerning that this is your girl power group. But let's take a break from me and see what other people have to say about this female empowerment label. It's time for some articles. Now, this first article points out how Blackpink's lyrics talk about women being independent and not needing a man. But I'm not really sure how accurate that is considering their songs are usually about either breaking up with someone or making up with that same someone or hey, we're toxic now or hey, leave that girl you're with and come back to me, I'm better. Basically insinuating that they don't need a man is kind of funny when you consider how many songs of theirs revolve around men. However, like I've mentioned before, for speaking about men or being involved in a relationship, however toxic it may be, does not really make one less of a feminist. But it does go against that point about Blackpink promoting female independence and saying they don't need a man, especially considering 99% of their discography needed a man, specifically this man, to even exist. This article also mentions Blackpink's leader, Irene, as in Red Velvet's Irene as an example of Blackpink's feminism, which says about as much as you need to know. 
Also, it's kind of even hard to find articles that talk about their actions and not just about their records. But at the end of it, a lot of these articles make the same diluted point saying Blackpink proved that women don't need a man, which we've established is inaccurate if we go by their lyrics. They also say Blackpink prove women can be tough, which is again inaccurate because while yes, the tough image Blackpink have is badass and cool and definitely looks great on stage and they rock it, it doesn't necessarily however translate into feminism and implying that women need to be tough to be strong is going against feminism. And it must be said that it's totally fine if Blackpink don't want to make songs about feminism. Them being a woman doesn't mean they're forced to do that. They can sing about whatever they want. It's the fact that regardless of their songs putting down loads of women multiple times, they still somehow get away with marketing themselves as this female empowerment group. The number of times I've seen Blinks lie online saying Blackpink are these beacons of feminism in a taboo, patriarchal, woman-hating country as if they aren't the same people constantly saying that they're hot and rich and that other women should just stop trying because they can't compare. That is honestly the reason for me making this video because if Blackpink had the same lyrics but were real and upfront about their marketing and label, um, and the same with Blinks, then there's not really that much of a problem. Despite their lyrics putting down women, I would have let them be. It is the audacity of their team and fans almost brainwashing every media source to make it seem like every other K-pop girl group are all candy, rainbows, and boys, while Blackpink are strong female empowering goddesses is ridiculous. Not when it's literally the opposite. Not when there are literally songs by boy groups in K-pop that are more feminist than Blackpink's entire discography. Not when rookie girl groups have songs that are more outwardly feminist than any Blackpink track. And definitely not when almost every single line in Blackpink's entire discography is written by a man pretending to know what a woman is feeling and how they are supposedly supposed to feel about other women and how they see them as their competition for a man's attention. Trigger warning because I'll be talking about domestic abuse being used as an aesthetic. For their song Kill This Love, Blackpink did a photo shoot with bruises and scrapes on their face and people were understandably upset. Blinks did come to their defense, citing that this criticism was hypocritical because other K-pop groups have also used fake scars and bruises for music videos. Even Les Seraphim recently did something similar, but wait. Let's not act purposefully dense and focus on the context here because it's definitely not hypocritical and is an actual problem because Blackpink are the only group to have paired these images of them with bruises all over with a song about toxic love with lyrics like these. The problem was never them wearing fake scars, it's them using these images to promote their song about toxic relationships. In this context, with their lyrics in mind, these images seem to be pointing to domestic views, and for them to kind of pose and use this as promotional material, it's not only tacky, but very demeaning to victims of abuse. And fans who then proceeded to recreate the look are just as in the wrong. Next, I want to talk about the idol. You are definitely not going to like this. I'm real. I think it's too pussy around here. I can't change. All right, so dead the before we even get into Jenny's involvement, because that's quite a small part of it, let's discuss why the show is problematic. An article by Rolling Stones magazine spoke to 13 crew members who claimed that the show was originally set to be a feminist look at how the entertainment industry takes advantage of women, but after the weekend realized that the show was too much about women and not enough about him, there was a huge change. I know you guys can't see me, but I'm rolling my eyes like really hard. The female director, Amy Simetz, left and Sam Levinson of Euphoria fame took over along with The Weeknd and created what one source describes as a rape fantasy. 
The show went from satire to the very thing it was attempting to satirize. The crew members also say that the show features physically and sexually violent scenes that a source compared to torture porn. Here are just some of the reviews that the show got after its first screening, and they are terrifyingly bad. Spending an hour ranting about this monstrosity, here are just a few other statements made by the crew members about this terrifyingly terrible show. Getting to Jenny, she doesn't even have a good role in it because according to production members, despite all of the buzz the show is making about her being a part of it, her job was to quote, sit there and look pretty. And while I do understand that this is her first acting gig and I'm not really expecting them to trust her with a huge role, it is still disrespectful how they are using her and her fame knowing that no one else wants to see the show except for her diehard fans who will turn a blind eye to all of the derogatory and just disgusting things that are coming out about the show just because Jenny's in it. Getting back to Blackpink and why this is harmful to their quote feminist image. This is what Jenny said about Sam Levinson and the script. And while some blinks like to pretend that this was her opinion on the original script, she does talk about Sam Levinson, who only came in afterwards and made the show terrible. It is only after Sam Levinson came in that he chose to cast pop stars and influencers, so that's when Jenny came in. So for blinks who say she liked the original script, she wasn't even a part of it. And while I do want to believe that Jenny only said all of this because she got to be on an American show, which is a great opportunity for her to garner more popularity and network, I wish she would have picked her words carefully or just rethunk being a part of this entire production considering the brand Blackpink tried to sell. It feels like Blackpink flip-flop on their stance on female empowerment and feminism based on what will benefit them at that current stage. And this confusion fully translates onto their fans as well. Also, the way Blinks are literally boldly lying saying Jenny signed on for the original script. How do you know that? Especially considering she herself and several news articles have said the actual opposite. It's clearly stating that Sam Levinson, aka the guy who rewrote the show to make it torture porn, was the one who decided to hire pop stars and influencers, including Jenny. And going by Blink's logic, if Jenny was cheated on to being a part of this show, like she's a child, why would she so happily join interviews and promotions for the TV show? She's obviously making huge efforts to fly out around the world in the middle of a world tour, all to support and promote a show that she supposedly was cheated on to being a part of? Explain that. You're telling me that her willing to compliment Sam Levinson in every interview and article is all part of her contract? Along with her singing praises about the weekend and being part of the show, it's all in the contract, right? It's honestly time for Blinks to stop babying her and accept the fact that she is 27 and knowingly made this decision to be a part of this disaster despite its crude message. It's actually funny when you stop to see how many lies Blinks are spewing online and how they directly contradict with every single statement she puts out about the show. And let's do a rapid fire answering of Blink's concerns and rebuttals because clearly user Jenny's bitch knows more about feminism, the show, the entertainment industry, etc. than actual experts in the industry, huge publications, and critics who worked and studied this exact issue for several years and made statements about how disgusting the show is. The show is clearly satire, you guys are just dumb to understand it. Yes, of course, experts in the film and TV industry as well as actual crew members who worked on the show and still denounced it are no one in front of Jenny's stands. 
Honestly, have you ever seen people who worked on a show, were literally paid to be there and get paid for its success, go in public to denounce the show? Not for clout or money considering it was anonymous, but just because of how absolutely disappointed and disgusted they are with the production. It wasn't just one or two or even three, it was 13 crew members. Of course, all of you were hating on Jenny, the woman in the production, and not The Weeknd and Levitson who literally made the show. Firstly, kudos to your confidence for pulling out the sexist card considering we are literally talking about Jenny being in a show exploiting women. And I can assure you that Sam Levinson and The Weeknd are being absolutely destroyed online and in articles like they deserve. But keep in mind, I'm talking about Jenny because I have a K-pop channel. A lot of Weekend fans have already expressed how disappointed and disgusted they are because they know how to look past stan culture. Also, Sam's past and the Weekend's lyrics have already established them as chauvinist pigs. We are disgusted, but not entirely too surprised. People tend to be more disappointed in those they expected better from. And Jenny is the only one who's in this sexist production while still selling a feminist label and profiting off of it on the side. That's kind of why people are more disappointed with Troy, Lily, and Jenny. We expected better from them. We already knew these showrunners suck. Jenny has a small part. Why would you read the entire script? What do you mean she said yes to being on a show without reading the script? That's the first and bare minimum. People do that before they audition. And also, are you seriously trying to tell me that even after filming her scenes, having the production wrap up, attending screenings, watching it, and after the show is even released, she somehow still doesn't know what it's about and is just blindly supporting it? It's time for you guys to understand that Jenny is a grown-ass woman pushing 30, and she was well aware of what she signed on to but lacked the education and critical thinking to understand how disgusting it is. And I am aware that my next words are harsh, but you need to understand that I'm not exactly ready to be lenient about misogyny and exploitation of women's struggles in 2023, so pardon me for being angry about it. Jenny clearly only saw this gig as an opportunity for fame in Hollywood and nothing more. And while I have praised her for her networking and opportunist approach in the past, there does need to be more thinking that goes into these decisions. Who's her manager? They need to be making better choices on her behalf. The team needs to consider what they've been selling for the past six years and how this show is literally the exact opposite of it. And this is exactly why I am so against people becoming K-pop trainees as children. However, I will defend Jenny when it comes to people who criticize her involvement in the show because of the age of her fans. Because guess what? It is those fans and their parents' responsibility to assess what their child is exposed to. Jenny is a full-grown adult and can join the series even if it is R-rated. That was never the problem with the show, it is the disgusting message about the women that they are attempting to spread. And I know, regardless of this, many people, especially Blinks, will be tuning into this show to support the exploitation of women, but I really hope the message really goes over people's head, because this is the one time it really doesn't need to stick around. I, for one, will be protecting my brain cells and watching actually good shows. Speaking of brain cells, let's bring it over to Blinks. Keep in mind, this is some Blinks. Perhaps the loudest preachers of feminism considering they pull out the quote, you're hating on women of color card if anyone even dares to say that they don't like a Blackpink song. Let's see how empowering their actions have been towards women. Also, while the rest of this video has been about Blackpink's brand and it wasn't really personal, this entire section definitely is, so if you are a Blink who has acted like this in the past, feel free to take all offense. And just so, again, this is quick and not an hour long, here's just a short compilation I made while I was researching for this video. Keep in mind that these are just some of the many, many, many female idols that have been targeted and harassed by Blinks, and if you've been active on either Twitter or have been in the comments of any of these female idols' Instagram, you know that this video could easily be hours long if I chose to include all of it. 
gatekeeping hair clips, headbands, entire designer brands, dyeing your hair, and then spewing the most disgusting comments over accessories seems to be a little off course for feminism, don't you think? It's almost like feminism is a decorative badge to you that you wear to point to when it comes to Blackpink, but then ignore when it comes to any other female in the industry. I honestly think there hasn't been a single female group that Blinks haven't hated on in some way or the other. Which does make you wonder, where is the female empowerment? Where is the girl power? Where is the feminism? It's almost like the mixed messages of Blackpink's branding and career moves mirror the actions of their fans, who preach feminism only to turn around and tear other women down. The female empowerment label on Blackpink seems almost laughably misplaced, which doesn't necessarily mean that the Blackpink members aren't feminist. Like I've mentioned several times before, their personal lives could be the entire opposite, but that is not my business. I'm concerned with their public image. Where have we actually seen female empowerment? We've only seen Blackpink empowering Blackpink. Now, I will say I haven't seen every single Blackpink content out there, so if there is a time they've said something to prove otherwise, please let me know in the comments, I'm ready to hear y'all out. But even with that, I think my video explains how media's representation of feminism and praising people for exhibiting the absolute opposite of it is getting tiring. It's 2023. This absolutely cannot be K-pop symbol of feminism. And with that, I will be stopping the video right here. Again, if you did pay attention, you would notice that I did not speak about the members personally and only their careers. So, you know, be civil in the comments. And before you do comment something hateful, try to prioritize your morals over blind stand culture because, you know, you can continue to be someone's fan but still disapprove of some of their actions and choices. My goal with this video was kind of to showcase what true feminism is about and how tainted its definition has become among the K-pop community, which is incredibly disappointing to witness. Other than that, please do like this video and subscribe to my channel if you appreciate the effort that went into making this video because I did spend a lot of time researching for this one because I definitely did not want to get anything wrong. And let me know if you want to see other videos like this, and take care.